one of those really good sort of talks to have, which is that everyone else did the work and I'm just here as the presenter. Um, so this is work done by my colleagues, uh, Mary Bennett and Ed Jones. It follows on from stuff we've talked about for some time, looking at getting CGEN up to production quality for risk five. And it's driven by the need uh, for an upstream GNU simulator. There are plenty of simulators out there. There's QEMU, there's a Spike and so forth. And Mike Freisinger, Jim Wilson and Kito Cheng wrote a hand wrote a, uh, a GNU assembler, um, a GNU simulator upstream, um, which is still used, but not, not, not very widely. And we want something that can just be in the repository as a standard simulator so you can do target sim in GDB. And we want it in a way that it's going to be easy to update with new instruction set extensions. And CGEN gives you that. And of course, we're not proposing to do this yet because we'll break a load of things that are already there with the existing assembler and disassembler. But in the future, we may start to look at how fast can we bring up assemblers and disassemblers for new extensions. And this technology gives you that as well. So I'm going to focus on the simulator. Um, so um, those of you who don't know, CGEN is an architectural description of uh, in scheme defines the syntax and semantics, and it can give you an assembler, disassembler, and if you put the semantics in, a simulator. And basically for each architecture, you define two files, a scheme description in .cpu and some supporting C code in a .opc file, and CGen will generate the relevant standard files in the sim directory for the simulator, and though we're not particularly doing it on this particular project, in the opcodes directory for um, libopcodes uh, assembler and disassembler. Um, so what were the key challenges in doing this? CGEN is not new technology, it's been around for at least two decades. Uh, one is we didn't want to replace the existing assembler and disassembler because that works. And if you replace something that works, something will stop working. So though everything has got the triple RISC-V hyphen something at present, this work has got the triple risk five hyphen C gen hyphen something. Um, and that means we don't trample on the existing assembler. To do with the way the simulator works, we still need them both in libop codes. So they're both linked into libop codes. And it turns out there's only one symbol clash which we can get away with by renaming. And the other challenge was supporting both 32 bit and 64 bit floating point together in one architecture. And there are some missing functions in CGEN for that, which I've, I guess it's never been done in a, a CGEN architecture before. And we've got some patches for CGEN, uh, which we'll be sending into Frank um, very shortly. Um, and the other challenge is we've, modded, modified, we've modeled the floating point registers as 64-bit doubles, which doesn't really work for 32-bit floating point. We get the rounding wrong. So where are we today? Um, we have to at build time, decide what configurations we're going to do. Risk five is immensely configurable, but we've only got a subset of those configurations we can do. Um, it doesn't seem to be able to dynamically do that in CGEN is a bit of a problem. Um, we don't support all of floating point. The, the quad extension isn't supported. I know it's a subset we've got there, but the instructions aren't in there. Um, there are no rounding modes, um, and not a numbers don't follow the risk five spec. There's no privilege spec. This is just an instruction set simulator. We emulate syscalls. There's a min minimal set of CSRs in there, the basic ones you have to have, but a load of the ones that are really about controlling the outside world aren't there. It's single core like most uh, GNU simulators. TLS is broken, and we need to fix that. And it's got a relatively small test suite at the moment, and it really needs more tests of the simulator. So how does it do? Um, it does better than QEMU on the C torture tests, um, um, but it's got some more, apart from unresolved tests, and we need to sort of get on top of those unresolved tests. And its own simulator passes all its tests. There's basically one test for every opcode, uh, but we need something a bit richer than that. Okay. Um, so um, the patch went in on Thursday for review. Uh, we'd welcome uh, review comments on that so we can get the simulator in and feedback. It's not in its very final version. We need to put more testing in there. I think it would be re reasonable to reject it for 
the tests not being sufficient. The GNU torture tests are not a good test of floating point, and given that was the hardest bit to do, we need to test that harder, and the obvious thing is to use test float for that. And so we need to do that testing and decide what we're going to do about NANs and rounding modes, and it's probably acceptable for a first version of the simulator to ignore those. And in the future, we'd like to add the queue extension. We need to add more of the control registers. We obviously need to fix TLS. And the whole point is to support, uh, we want to support more RISC-V configurations. So if you want to do something you know, weird in the instruction set, set, set extensions you're using, we ought to be able to support that. And over time, we want to add more uh, extensions. We've got a fair way with the draft bitmap, bitmanip instructions, which is a relatively small set. But there's the DSP instruction uh, set extension, there's the JIT instruction set extension, there is the huge vector instruction set extension, which is actually bigger than all other instruction set extensions put together. Um, and actually, I think it's when we get to vector, the merit of this approach will become real. Um, so that's where we are with that. The patch is up there. Please review, comment, add contributions. I just wanted to put in there the one of the two people working on that's Mary Bennett, who some of you will know as running Risk Five's university outreach, but she is also a student at Surrey University, and her research project has been on the, using SAIL as a substitute for CGen. SAIL is a formal process of description in OCaml. It is much more rigorous, rigorous than Scheme. And it's typically used in processor validation contexts. And there are sale descriptions of all the main processors, ARM and, of course, RISC-V. And I think we're getting towards the stage where it may well become the official formal description of RISC-V. And it actually has all the information you need to do exactly what CGen does. And so we've got some preliminary work which shows its potential as a CGen replacement. You could generate CGen input files you might actually do better just saying, let's take the infrastructure from CGen and generate those C and files and headers direct. That's not going to happen this year or next year, but it is a long-term goal. Um, um, we'd like to get there because I think then we'd have quite a rigorous way of generating a lot of the low-level tools um, for uh, the GNU tool toolchain automatically. Thank you very much. Um, Um, while Maxim is changing over, I will take um, uh, questions. Okay. Um, can you access the simulator from inside GDB? Yes. Target sim. Perfect. All work. That was that was that was the whole point actually. <laughs> Apologies if you answered this earlier in the talk, but why why write a GDB simulator? as opposed to just using QMU? Uh, so, so, Why so, would you write a GDB simulator as opposed to using QMU? Um, QMU is a much bigger tool. It does a lot more. And actually, quite often you want an easy, lightweight simulator. And actually, extending QEMU to do more and more instruction set extensions. This is hugely motivated by the customer coming along saying, I've got a new instruction set extension. And the whole reason we use CGen internally is we do a lot of work with customers who come along with, I've got architecture X or architecture extension X, and we want to be able to churn out simulators and assemblers and disassemblers very quickly. QEMU, it's not, it's not as quick to do, but QEMU is fine and, right, and I, more powerful. I was just curious, just because, you know, from the GDB perspective, or well, my GDB perspective, the simulators are kind of a pain in the ass to deal with, and so I often wonder why people I think bother. different applications, different courses for courses. Okay. Any more? Okay, I'll hand over to Maxim. Thank you.